so we proceed with the evaluation of security. That was what, uh, which, uh, what was introduced in the last session. And you see that evaluation of security is all about the process of determining the worth of a security, be it the ordinary share, be it the preference share, be it a debenture. And you see that the value attached to a security is what we call the intrinsic value, also known as the theoretical value, also known as the real value. And we discuss about on how we value mostly the debt security. And you say that to determine the intrinsic value, mostly for the debt, it's all about taking the present value of the future expected cash flows. What does that mean? Now, for example, in case it's a debt, to get the intrinsic value, you'll take the present value of an annuity, and mostly for the debt, it attracts the interest. Then you add the present value of the maturity value. As simple as that. So that was discussed in the last session. So today I want us to start on valuation of ordinary share. So in the last session, we did the valuation of uh, debt security. I did about the debentures, mostly the redeemable debentures or bond. So now let's discuss about the valuation of ordinary share. Valuation of ordinary share. We like to see that ordinary shares are classified into three. Ordinary shares are classified into three. Ordinary shares are classified into three for the purposes of valuation. For the purposes of valuation, ordinary shares are classified into three for the purposes of valuation. For the purposes of valuation, number one, number one, number one, number one. Zero dividend growth rate ordinary share. Zero dividend growth rate ordinary shares. Number B, we have the constant dividend growth rate ordinary shares and number c we have non-constant dividend growth rate ordinary shares We start with the first one, zero dividend growth rate ordinary share. And we have to say that in this case, in this case, in this case, the company promises, in this case, the company promises, in this case, the company promises constant dividend per share, the company promises a constant dividend per share. The company promises a constant dividend per share for each period, for each period, for each period. I.e., 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 that means the DO will be equal to D1, will be equal to D2, will be equal to D3. So that means you'll be receiving a constant dividend per share. 
Yeah, that, that, that means in that case, we treat the ordinary shareholders as the preference shareholders. You see, for the preference shareholders, if we have a 10% preference share, they'll be receiving a constant dividend, preference dividend per share, which will be 10% of the per value. Now, in this case, that's how we treat the ordinary share. Right, we see that? You explain, see that? In this case, in this case, ordinary shareholders are treated, in this case, the ordinary shareholders, the ordinary shareholders are treated as if they are preference shareholders. The ordinary shareholders are treated as if they are preference shareholders. As if they are preference shareholders. Full stop. The constant dividend per share, the constant dividend per share, in this case, the constant dividend per share, the constant dividend per share, in this case, the constant dividend per share in this case will represent an annuity, will represent an annuity, will represent an annuity to infinity, will represent an annuity to infinity, will represent an annuity to infinity, an annuity to infinity. Full stop. Therefore, 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 the intrinsic value, therefore, the intrinsic value. Therefore, the intrinsic value of the share, the intrinsic value of the share will be computed as follows. Therefore, the intrinsic value of the share will be computed as follows. Will be computed as follows. Yeah, so you're saying that in this case, that constant dividend per share will be treated as an annuity to infinity. Now the question is, how do we determine the intrinsic value? Therefore, to get the intrinsic value, now that's the market price per share, now we assume how do you get the present value of an annuity to infinity? So you take the annuity over R. So now in this case, our annuity will be the dividend over R, which is the cost of capital. You can show that. Number B, that was zero dividend growth rate. Number B is the constant dividend growth rate, ordinary share. Constant dividend growth rate. Constant dividend growth rate, ordinary share. See that? This is where, this is where, this is where, this is where the dividend, the dividend will grow at a constant. This is where the dividend. This is where the dividend will grow at a constant growth rate, at a constant growth rate to infinity. At a constant growth rate, at a constant growth rate to infinity. Full stop. In this case, in this case, in this case, DPS or dividend per share, in this case, comma, the DPS will be computed as follows. The DPS will be computed as follows. Yeah, so in case where we have a constant dividend growth rate, eh, that means if it's 10%, it's 10% per annum to infinity. So in that case, how do we get uh, D? So in case we want to get D1, you'll take DO1 plus D raised to power one. In case we want to determine the dividend for period two, it will be now d o one plus d raised power two. Yes, you want for period three, take d o one plus d raised power three. And therefore, how do we get the intrinsic value? Now, to get the intrinsic value, which is denoted by p o, you will take d o one plus d r minus two. Can show that. Okay. 
illustration. They say that an investor received a dividend. An investor received a dividend of 1.5 shillings. An investor received a dividend of 1.5 shillings in the current financial year. In the current financial year. In the current financial year. Full stop. The power value of the share is 20 shillings. The power value of the share. The power value of the share is 20 shillings with an annual growth rate of dividend with an annual growth rate of dividend with an annual growth rate of dividend of 8% with an annual <clears throat> growth rate of dividend of 8% full stop the current market price per share is 150 shillings the current market price per share the current market price per share is 150 shillings, 150 shillings. Full stop. The investor required rate of return, the investor required rate of return, the investor required rate of return is 20%. The investor required rate of return, the investor required rate of return is 20%. Required, required, required. Determine the intrinsic value. Determine the intrinsic value. Determine the intrinsic value. Determine the intrinsic value of this ordinary share. Determine the intrinsic value of this ordinary share. Yeah, so read that question again. Just read the question again. So solution is so that in case of a constant dividend growth rate, to get the intrinsic value, take DO and that's the most recent dividend per share, one plus the growth rate, then you take R, the cost of capital, the required rate of return minus the growth rate. So in our case, DO, the investor received a dividend of 1.5, one plus the growth rate, the growth rate is expected at 8%. R, the required rate of return is 20%, so it's 0 0.2 minus the growth rate of 0 0.08. So what do you get? The 10.5. So you can copy. So now let's look at methods, methods of computing growth rates.
I had also discussed this when you are evaluating the cost of capital. And they say that whenever you're not provided the growth rate, there are two methods you can use to determine the growth rate. Eh? Number one, number one, number one, retention ratio method. The retention ratio method. Retention ratio method, let us say that. Under this method, under this method, the constant growth rate, under this method, comma, the constant growth rate will be determined as follows. The constant growth rate will be determined as follows. Will be determined as follows. So to get the growth rate, you will take RPE where R is the retention ratio. BE is the return on equity. The other method is the compounding method. Compounding method. You see that? Under this method, under this method, under this method, comma, the constant growth rate, the constant growth rate, under this method, comma, the constant growth rate will be determined. The constant growth rate will be determined, will be determined by comparing the dividend per share, the constant growth rate will be determined by comparing the dividend per share for two periods, for two periods, for two periods, for two periods. Two periods. Full stop. Compare the dividend per share for two periods. Compare the dividend per share for two periods. Full stop. So we're saying that under compounding method, how we determine the growth rate? Now, to determine the growth rate, you will take DN, DO, N root minus one, where what's DN, what's DO? Now, DN will represent our most recent dividend per share. We can say the last dividend per share and analysis period. Then DO was the first dividend per share under the analysis period. Illustration, illustration one, illustration one, you see that? A company has been paying the following dividend for the last five years. A company has been paying the following dividend. A company has been paying the following dividend for the last five years, the last five years. So we have the year and then we have the dividend per share. Year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. The first dividend to be paid was 5.23, 5.5, .5, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8, 5.9, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.100, 5.101, 5.102, 5.103, 5.104, 5.105, 5.106, 5.107, 5.108, 5.109, 5.110, 5.111, 5.112, 5.113, 5.114, 5.115, 5.116, 5.117, 5.118, 5.119, 5.120, 5.121, 5.122, 5.123, 5.124, 5.125, 5.126, 5.127, 5.128, 5.129, 5.130, 5.131, 5.132, 5.133, 5.134, 5.135, 5.136, 5.137, 5.138, 5.139, 5.140, 5.141, 5.142, 5.143, 5.144, 5.145, 5.146, 5.147, 5.148, 5.149, 5.150, 5.151, 5.152, 5.153, 5.154, 5.155, 5.156, 5.157, 5.158, 5.159, 5.160, 5.170, 5.171, 5.172, 5.173, 5.174, 5.175, 5.176, 5.177, 5.178, 5.178, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 5.179, 
Determine the growth rate. Determine the growth rate. We determine the growth rate. Determine the growth rate. Now, whenever you're given the information about the dividend trend, use the compounding method where the growth rate is dn over do n root minus one. So now this is what you do. This is what you do. Now the first dividend to be paid, you indicate it as do d1, d2, d3, d4. So therefore, dn will be the most recent dividend per share of the last dividend, uh, dividend per share to be paid, which is 6.6. .6. You divide by do. Do the first dividend to be paid under the analysis, 5.23, end root. And we represent the period. Now, for period, in this case, you see there are five years, but you take four. Because how do you determine that? So what you are determining from the first year to the second year, that's the first growth, second growth, third growth, fourth growth. So in case we have five years, we take five minus one. So therefore, the last one was D4. So therefore, N will not be five, N will be four. And then you minus one. So do you remember? Good. Three point. Three point four nine percent. Hope everyone is getting three point nine. Hey, are you getting this? That's why I told you to compute. Is everyone getting 3.49? Because I can see now everyone is copying without determining how much was the answer. Eh? Yeah, using a calculator is a concept. Eh? Can you do this? Do what I say. 6.6 .6 divided by 5.23. 6.6 divided by 5.23 equals. Then you want to get the fourth root. So to get the fourth root, you press four. Shift raised to power four shift raised to power, then answer of the answer equals then you minus one times a hundred. What do you get? Get six percent. Now let's try another illustration. December 2013. December 2013,
Max Enterprise Limited had the following pattern of earnings per share over the last five years. So you have the year 208, 209 up to 2012. And then we have the earnings per share. The company maintained a constant dividend payout ratio of 40%. And the company required rate of return is 13%. Required the company theoretical value of the share. So the company theoretical value of the intrinsic value. So I'll determine that. So the first step, you have to determine the growth rate. And I'll determine the growth rate. So to determine the growth rate, it's dn over do n root minus one. So we have the earnings per share. Now in this case, you don't want to be focused. Eh? Now how you have to wait, can you indicate it to wait? Can you indicate it as do? Then 209 D1, 2010 D2, like that, up to the end. Uh -huh. So how much will be our DN? 4.86, and DO will be? 4. Ah, that's very wrong. 208, 209, 2010, 2011. 2012. Let me do it for you. Here we have the earnings per share. Hmm? This is 4. This is 4.2, 4.41, 4.63, 4.86. represent the dividend. So in this case, we are not given the dividend. We are given the earnings per, per share. So you have to convert this earnings per share to dividend per share. And you are told that the company maintained a constant dividend payout ratio of 40%. So you take 40% of this. So for example, first one, you take 40% of 4, which is 1.6. Now give me the last one. The only relevant is for the first year and the last year. Sorry? 1.9. So therefore, this one will be D4, D1, D2, D3, D4. So therefore, our DN is the most recent dividend per share, which is 1.9. DO was the first dividend at analysis, which is 1.6. N, we have up to D4. So N will be 4, and then you minus 1. So give me that. Yes? 4.4%. Uh, if you're getting 4.4. Now, the last one, was it 1.9? Yes? 1.9? Yes, dividend is very important. And if you one, 1.9.4. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're getting. Four point nine, which is approximately five percent. But now the question was, you determine the theoretical value. Now to determine the company theoretical value, that's the intrinsic value. So intrinsic value of the share, we said D O one plus G R minus G. Aya, now let me take you back to the cost of capital. D O for the cost of capital is the most recent dividend per share. Then you expect that dividend to grow. So in this case, our DO is how much? We have DO here. It's one point? <laughs> it would be 1.6. Our DO, I repeat again. DO, when you're determining the cost of capital, is the most recent dividend per share, which is for 2012. Of which in this case, the last dividend to be paid was 1.94. This is what now you expect to grow at the rate of 5%. 
Excellent. Not the first dividend now to start growing again. No, is this dividend to be uh, to, to grow now, which is 1.94, one plus the growth rate of 5%, so that you get now D1, what is called the expected dividend. Then you divide it by R. R is the required rate of return. How much is the required rate of return? Mm -hmm. The company required rate of return is 13%, so it's 0 0.13. Minus G, G is the growth rate, 0 0.05. Now, let me explain something here. To determine the cost of ordinary share, we said it's DO1 plus G and then PO plus G. And we said that DO is the most recent dividend per share. But when now computing the growth rate, DN over DO n root minus one. Now, in this case, this is the most recent dividend per share. When computing the growth rate, the DN is the most recent dividend per share. And the DO in this case was the first dividend to be paid. First to be paid. So that means for the growth rate, the DN will be the DO when computing the value of the share. So how much is that? That 25 point? 25 point. Now let's do another illustration. November 2019. Question three. November 2019, question three. Question three, C. Fair and Industries Limited has recently been listed on the security exchange. The company policy of paying out, the company has a policy of paying out a gradually increasing dividend per share over the last uh, five years, as indicated below. So we have year 2014 to 2018, earnings per share, dividends per share. Now, when you have the dividend per share, can you indicate the first one as D, O, D1, D2, D3, D4, like that? And you indicate where you have the dividend per share as D, O, D1, D2, like that. Eh? So that means we can be able to determine the growth rate. D, N over D, O, N root minus 1. How much was D, N? We have 7.3. And D was five. What about N? N is four, correct, minus one. Now give me the growth rate. Sorry? 9.92, eh? so let's work with 10%. Because mm -hmm. it's 9.9. .9. Additional information. The company has recently paid a dividend for the year ended that first December 2018. The shares are therefore quoted ex dividend. That means exclusive of dividend. Number two, the management is considering a change in the financing policy whereby greater financing will be provided from internally generated funds. This is expected to reduce the dividend per share to five in the year ending that first of December 2019. 
The growth rate in the earnings per share and dividend per share is expected to increase to 14% per annum from the year ending that first December 2019. The company shareholders requires a minimum return on investment of 16% required. Number one, using the dividend growth model, determine the market price per share as at that first December 2018 prior to the change in the financing policy. You determine the value of the market price per share before the change in policy. Now, to get the market price per share, which is denoted as PO, PO also means the theoretical value, so that you take DO 1 plus D R minus D. Now, prior to the change, give me the DO. How much was the DO? 7.3, correct. 7.3, 1 plus the growth rate. Our growth rate is 10%, so it's 0 0.1. R is the required date of return, note number four. The company shareholder required minimum return on investment of 16%, so it's 0 0.16 minus the growth rate of 10%. So how much is the current market price per share? Sorry? Point? Eight three. Mm -hmm. Number two. The market price per share as at that first December 2018 under the new financing policy. So we want to get the market price under the new financing policy. So under the new financing policy, also the formula is the same. Theoretical value is D O one plus G R minus G. And you see that if you take DO1 plus D, what do you get? DO1 plus D, you get D1, correct. R minus D. So we want to determine now the market price per share after the dividend policy change. Now let's go to note number two. Note number two. The management is considering a change in the financing policy, whereby greater financing will be provided from internally generated funds. This is expected to reduce the dividend per share to five in the year ending that first December 2019. is expected to reduce the dividend per share to five. So you're already given the expected dividend. Now D1 is what we call the expected dividend. I told that if you change the policy, the expected dividend will pay at five over R does not change. R is the required rate of return. And the required rate of return is 16% minus the growth rate. Note number three. The growth rate in earnings per share and dividend per share is expected to increase to 14. So in that case, the dividend or the growth rate now will increase from 10% and now will increase to 14%. So 0.14. 5 divided by 0 0.02. Okay? You get to 15. So after the policy change, we expect the market price per share to be 250. Number three, number three. The break-even growth rate in dividend per share using the market price calculated in C1 above. The break-even growth rate. So we're computing the growth rate, break-even. What do you mean by break-even? We know very well that at break-even point, the general concept in economics is that at break-even point, this is where the marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Everything is equal. Yeah. So if everything is equal, that means at break-even point, now in this case, we're valuing the market price. At break-even, the market price per share before the change will expect it to be the same as the market price per share after the policy change. That's what it means at break-even, where the two outcome will be the same. Now, what are we computing? Now, the question is very specific. The break-even growth rate. So you want G. Now, the market price before the change, that one always remains constant because we're using the market information we have. Of which the market price per share before the policy change was 133.83. 
and will be assumed to be the same as the market price after the change. Now you want, after the change, how much is that expected growth rate? So how do we get the market price after the change? This was what we used here. D1, we expected to be five. R does not change, we remain to be 16. Now, this G is what now the examiner wants. The question on the break even growth rate in dividend per share. So, assuming that we want the equal outcome, whereby the expected market price after the change and the current market price per, uh, for the, the current market price before the change to be the same, how much will be this expected growth rate? So, minus G. So, this is now what we are computing. So, from there, you cross multiply. So, it will be 133.83, you multiply by 0 0.16 minus G and should be equal to five. Let's open the bracket. 133.83 times 0 0.16. Sorry? 0.41 minus, this one minus G will get 133.83 and is equals to five. Sorry, G is equals to five. So take this to the other side, this comes to the other side. So it'll be 21.41 minus five and you get 16.41 is equals to 133.83 G. Now give me the growth rate and you give me in percentage. You get 12.2. So you can copy.
So part C of the ordinary share, or you have the non-constant dividend growth rate ordinary share. So how do you determine the value? This is where, this is where the dividend will increase. This is where, this is where, this is where the dividend will increase at different rates. This is where the dividend will increase at different rates, at different rates during the earlier period of economic life during area period, during the area period, during the area period of the economic life, during the area period of the economic life, before the growth rate, before the growth rate, before the growth rate, before the growth rate, before the growth rate becomes constant to infinity, before the growth rate, before the growth rate becomes constant to infinity. Or the growth rate becomes constant to infinity. To infinity. Constant. The theoretical value in this case, the theoretical value in this case, the theoretical value in this case will be calculated as follows. The theoretical value in this case will be calculated as follows. So in case of an unconstant dividend growth rate, how do you determine the theoretical value? So to determine the theoretical value or the intrinsic value, theoretical value or the intrinsic value which is denoted by P or now you'll take the present value of dividends during the non constant and constant growth period. Then you add the present value of dividend during the constant growth period. Take the present value of the dividend during the constant growth period. Then you add the present value of the dividend during the constant growth period. Uh, you see part B. This is part C. Part B evaluating uh, intrinsic value of the ordinary share in case of a constant dividend growth period. So how do we get the, uh, the intrinsic value in case of the dividend uh, constant dividend growth rate at a constant rate? This one you have said that you will take D O 1 plus G R minus G. That's what we have been evaluating. That to get the dividend during the constant growth rate, the present value, these are getting the intrinsic value. But in this case, we are saying that we need the present value. So to determine the present value, you have to discount. Then you multiply by the present value interest factor R period N. So you can show that. So open May 2012, question 3B. Mm. 
The rate I told that one limited earnings and dividend per share have been growing at the rate of 18% per annum. This rate is expected to be constant for four years, after which it will fall to 12% for another four years. Thereafter, the growth rate will be 6% in perpetuity. So that means from year eight now, it will be 6% to perpetuity. It will be constant. The last dividend per share to be paid was two shillings, and the investor required rate of return is 15%. Required the intrinsic value of the share. So the intrinsic value of the share. So here we have the period. We need the dividend per share. We need the question again. More unlimited earnings and dividend per share have been growing at the rate of 18% per annum. This rate is expected to be constant for four years, after which it will fall to 12% for another four years. So that means for the first four years, the growth rate will be 18%. And then it will fall to 12% for another four years. So this one will be 12%. Thereafter, the growth rate will be 6% to perpetuity. From year 8 now to perpetuity, now the dividend growth rate will be constant to perpetuity at the rate of 8% or 6%. So in such a case, how do you determine the intrinsic value? So you'll take the present value of dividend during the non-constant growth period. So present value of the dividend. So we need to get this dividend. Which are those dividends? Uh -huh, we are told that. The last dividend per share to be paid was two. The last dividend to be paid was two. That's DO. So to get this, you will take DO one plus G, as simple as that. So year one, the last dividend to be paid, we are told it was two times. For the first four years, each year, the dividend will be going at 18%. So it's one plus the growth rate, 0 0.18. What do you get? You just take two times 1.18. I mean, into two decimal places. 2.36. Two Year two will be 2.361 one plus 0 0.18. 2.78. Remember, each year is growing at 18%. One plus 0 0.18. Three point two nine. Three point two nine one from zero point one eight. Sorry. Three point eight eight. Then three point eight eight. Now from year five to year eight each year, now the growth rate will be twelve. So it's one from zero point one two. Four point four point three four. Then you have four point three four one plus zero point one two. Four point eight six. Four point eight six one plus five point four four. Then five point four four one plus zero point one two. Six point zero nine. So we already have the dividends. Now, once we get the dividend, what we need is the present value of the dividend. So to get the present value, you discount. The dividends are not the same. So therefore, present value interest factor. How much the required rate of return? The required rate of return is fifteen percent. So fifteen percent year end. So we use the past table. We use the past table since the dividend are not the same. 15% here one is, is 0 0.8696. We have 7561. We have 6575. We have 5718. 4972. 4323. 3759. And we have three, two, six, nine. Now let's get the present values. So to get the present value, we take the dividend, you multiply by the discounting factor.
2.16 which one 2 point two point one mm -hmm. two point one six Two point two two. One zero. So now let's add the total, and that's I get the present value of dividends during non constant. Good period. Fifteen point eight. Of good. Uh -huh. So now. To get the unit cover, you see that you take the present value of the dividend during the non-constant growth period, which is 16.82. Then you add present value of the dividend during the constant growth period. And how do you get the present value of dividend during non-constant or during the constant? Sorry. During the constant growth period. So in this case, you take DO one plus G R minus G so that you get the intrinsic value. But what you get, now you'll get the intrinsic value from year eight. But what we need is the present value. So you need to discount. So since we are determining at the end of year eight, you discount present value interest factor. It's not an annuity. You will get the value at the end of year eight, but you want the present value at year zero. So it's present value interest factor, 15%, you always use the past, uh, the last period. So the last period was eight. What does it mean? DO, how much is our DO? You see, from year eight, now the growth rate will be six. So if you want to determine for the coming period, year eight, the dividend, the last dividend was 6.09. Then from there, we'll grow at a constant rate of 6%. So you add one plus 0 0.06. R, the cost of capital was 15% minus the growth rate of 0 0.06. And in that case, you get the intrinsic value at the end of year eight. But what we need is the present value. So you discount at the end of year eight, how much is the present value now? So you take 15% for year eight. So you always use the discounting rate for the last period, which is 0 0.3269. So what do you get? Twenty-three point four five. So that means PO or the intrinsic value. You take the present value of the dividend during the non-constant growth period, which is sixteen point eight two. Then you add the present value of the dividend during the constant growth period, which is twenty-three point four five. And that means the intrinsic value will be forty. Forty point two seven. Eh? 40.27, good. So you can copy.
November 2016, question 4A. November 2016, question 4A. Budacho Limited generated 50 million profit after tax in previous financial year. And that was the profit after tax for the last financial year. The firm adopts 40% payout ratio as dividend. So how much was the total dividend? Now we are told that Budacho generated 50 million in the last financial year. The dividend payout ratio is 40%. So they pay 40% of the earnings as dividend. So that means they paid 20 million as dividends. Mm -hmm. The total number of issued ordinary share is 10 million. So therefore, how much is DO or the dividend per share? So you'll take the total dividends, you divide by the number of shares. Now we are told that they made a total profit after tax of 50 in the previous financial year. The dividend payout ratio is 40. So you take 40% of 50 to determine how much was the total dividend for the last financial year, which was 20 million. Then you are told that this company has 10 million shares. So that means how much was the dividend per share? The dividend per share was two. And remember this was for the previous financial year. So that means that's what you call DO, the most recent dividend per share or the previous dividend per share. Second paragraph. The company has a potential investment opportunity. If undertaken, a dividend are expected to grow at the rate of 10% each year for the first three years, and then stabilize at 5% each year thereafter to perpetuate. The investor minimum required rate of return is 18% required. The current intrinsic value of the share the current intrinsic value. So how do we get that? So first of all, I need to determine the present value of the dividend during the non-constant growth period. We're given information about the past three years. Then we need the dividend per share. So we are told that the second paragraph. The company has a potential investment opportunity. If undertaken, dividends are expected to grow at the rate of 10% each year for the first three years. So for the first three years, the growth rate will be 10%. Then stabilize at 5% each year thereafter to perpetuity. Then from year three to perpetuity will be 5%. So how do we get this? So you take DO. 1 plus G. So DO, the most recent dividend per share was 2. Each of the first three years, we expected to grow at 10%. So it's 1 plus 0 0.1. You get 2.2. 2.2, 1 plus 0 0.1. And what do you get? 2. Point? 2 2. 2.42, 2.42, 1 plus 0 0.1, you get 2.6, 6.6. Now, once we have that, then you discount to get the present value. Present value, interest factor, the required rate of return, we are told is 18%, then period end. So we use the first table. Since the dividends are not the same, therefore it's not an annuity. So we use the first table. Year one is 0 0.75, year two 0 0.7. Uh, 
0.86. Now let's get the present values. So you take the dividend, you multiply by the discounting factor. One point eight six. Good. The last one is one point six six two. One point seven four. Then we add this one. Point two. So now we have the present value of the dividend during the constant growth period. Then we add or we compute the present value of dividend during the constant growth period. Now I have been told that from year three, the dividend will grow at a constant rate of 5% to perpetuity. So in that case, how do we get PO? So PO is that DO. 1 plus D, R minus D, so that you get the intrinsic value at the end of year three. But what we need is the present value. So you discount at the end of year three. Present value interest factor, the cost of capital is 18%. We see that we always discount using the last period of which we had up to year three. So it will be DO. DO is the most recent dividend per share. From year three, now it will grow at 5%. So the dividend for year three was 2.66. Then from year three, now we'll go at 5%. So it's one plus G, 0.05. All of it, R. R was the cost of capital. That one does not change. It's 18%, 0.18 minus the growth rate of 0.05. Then you discount 18%, three years. That's what we had here. It was 0.6086. What do you get? Thirteen point, thirteen point zero eight. So that means the intrinsic value. You take the present value of the dividend during the constant and unconstant growth period, which is five point two. Then you add the present value during the constant growth period, thirteen point zero eight, and you'll get eighteen point two. Good. You can copy. So that marks the end of that topic of variation of securities.